I consider myself a barbecue nerd, and so while, I mean, I definitely 100% believe Texas barbecue is the best because this is the hardest thing to cook, and I think beef is king. But uh, let's talk, we're going we're gonna to talk brisket and talk uh, meat selection first before we trim it. Like I said, this is going to be the longest part of the class, uh, brisket, because I'm going to trim it all the way out. My recommendation, if you're going to make a brisket at home, I would buy a choice grade or a prime grade brisket. You do not have to leave here and go buy a prime grade brisket to make a good brisket. A choice brisket is just fine. This is a choice brisket. Uh, a brisket is comprised of two pieces of meat, as I mentioned, the flat and the point. So it's not because this end comes to what looks like a point, but the but usually the top part here, this is the point, and they're, and they're, they're connected by this deckle here, all of this fat. And my butcher process is pretty simple. Fat is flavor, right? But this hard fat won't render off and it's worthless. So it'll just like melt all over the place. So I won't take the time, you know, at home to take all this itty bitty stuff off unless it's really thick. Like I'll take some of this off. Anything that takes away from the energy of the cook, and I'm not trying to sound like a hippie, but anything like this, I'm gonna cut that off. I'm also going to cut off this really hard fat right here. And then you always hear this on the bottom. People say, leave a quarter inch of fat. That's fine. You can take this. If you don't like this after the cook, you can cut the bottom off pretty easy, right? You can lay a slice down and slice it off. But this actually doesn't have too much on it down here. There's just a little bit here. So I'll, I'll take that off. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this stuff off the top. I mean, the thing is, we're not actually cooking this brisket in front of you today. So I'm not going to waste your time spending 25 minutes butchering this but just show you a couple things. On this, on this flat part, I would only take off this really nasty stuff right here on the end that's really thick. Now, competition barbecue tip, you take a lot more of this off because you need it to look really pretty, but we don't care about that. All this is fine. I need to get rid of, I need to get rid of this and some of the stuff on the bottom. So I have a friend that sharpens my knives and he wasn't available last night and that's a good thing because uh, I have cut myself like three times on his knife sharpening so you won't see me bleed out today. Anyway, um, I'm going to cut this big fat, this piece off and then it's hard to see here but what happens is we could cut this into two completely separate pieces of meat. There's no need to do that in the backyard, you know, in my opinion. So I'm just gonna kind of, the fat runs through here. You, you can always see a big, huge piece here and a huge piece here. If I took those off, it's kind of difficult to tell, but that's what's connecting it. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll just bring a line through here and this will start to come up. And you don't have to, uh, if you don't wanna do burn ins, just take these two big, huge pieces of fat off and go on. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little further here just so you know. So I'll stop here and show you this. Like I said, you cannot see, like it looks like all meat right here. But so, if, like I said, if you take these out, you can tell where this, if you take this big piece out, you're gonna see where this flat ends. And so there's just a little part that's hard to see. Just make a little, nice little cut, start to peel it up. I know you can't see down on this. That's why I wanna hold it up and show you. I'll, I'll keep lifting it up here. So I'm just taking my knife right along that huge piece of fat on the back side. Just like, like here you can see this fat, I'm doing the same thing. So all I'm doing is following following the top of the fat line, lifting it up. So I started to cut into the meat just a little bit here, but you can, now you can see this whole piece of fat really exposed. I would, whether you're doing burn-ins or not, I try to cut that out because that's not going to do you any good. It's just going to be a big blob of shit when you're done with it. Like I said, generally speaking, there's no reason for you to separate these. Um, even if you're doing burn ins, and I'm gonna show you that why in just a second. So let me just get this last kind of hard stuff off here. Okay, so if you wanted to make burn ins, I would take it this far. 
Here's why. Here's all your lean slices. All this can be burnt ends. Now, again, that's a little bit advanced. You may, a lot of people don't want to do it, but it's, to me, the best barbecue there is. So I, I do recommend this. Now that you've kind of pulled that back, what that does is the reason you expose this point is you want bark on the top of this point because ultimately I'm going to take this off. I'm going to cut it into cubes, put it in a pan, more sauce, seasoning, put it back on the pit. So you wanted to expose this. So for that reason, I'm going to continue to get the fat off this piece because I want the top of this. There's plenty, this is the fattiest piece of the brisket. There's plenty of fat on bottom. I want the top to look really good. All right, so I'm almost done here. Now the fat I'm cutting out that connects these two is, is quite hard fat. So, you know, if I didn't do this, you guys know what would happen if you're slicing your brisket, when you get to this end, these slices look like two pieces of meat, right? So when you're done cooking, if you just cut this thing, slice it all the way down like this, when you got to the point, it would look like piece of meat, fat, piece of meat. You go to a barbecue restaurant, you're the man. Um, What'll happen if you ask for the lean, they're cutting across, against the grain this way, but when you get to the point, you actually spin it because the meat goes a different direction and you actually cut this way. So, all right, that actually looks quite good. The fat that's left, there's not a lot of fat left. Uh, all I have left to do is take a little bit off the bottom. And I'll do that real quick. Um, I also would uh, square up the sides. I use a bigger knife for this usually, but it's in my trailer, so bear with me. Um, I like to cut, you know, a lot of the edge of this brisket is kind of a lot of junk. You'll see gray meat and stuff like that. So I'll, I'll normally just come in here and, and uh, just kind of square it up, make it look pretty. I'm big on making my food look pretty, right? You're entertaining your friends. You want, you want to impress people, right? When people come over to your house and eat, you want it to look good. You eat with your eyes first, very important. So, um, and you might put your food on Facebook like I do, and you don't want to do that if it looks like crap. Uh, on a brisket, I'm simply going to heavy coat the back side. I do the back side first, and I'll, I'll let you guys see this. So how much rub do you use? I, it takes about one third of a bottle to do a big brisket, in my opinion. I'm pretty liberal. And, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. This rub would look very black and white, but I added enough paprika to make it look red because supposedly red makes you want to buy it more. <laughs> That's a true story. But anyway, this side illustrates how much rub I put on because there's white fat and you can see it. So I would say that, I would classify that as pretty liberal. I mean, it's pretty heavy, right? If I see more white than seasoning, that's not enough. This is a big piece of meat. You're not going to, you're not going to, I have never put too much on here where people are like, whoa, that brisket's salty. That's, that's never happened. I've actually had ne no one ever complained there's too much seasoning on a brisket. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to flip, I'm going to pull the flat up so I can get in here on the point real good. I'll tell you another thing people do often, uh, particularly in competition, if they want their burn ins to look even better, they will actually cut this piece of meat off right here so this sits exposed the entire time, but that'd be wasting a whole lot of good meat. I mean, you could cook this separate, but I'm not, we don't need to do that. Do the underside of this one. And by the way, when we bring out finished meat and stuff like that, you guys come up and see it and So I cook with post oak and hickory, generally speaking, all my big meats. So what I do is I open the egg up and I get a fire lit. Regardless of what I want my ultimate temperature to be, I want to start a good fire. So I'll get that fire burning about 400-ish because that means it's really well lit. And then I'll start to what I call shut it down. I will then put it, well, I'll put some chunks. I, that's just my charcoal burning. Then I throw in the chunks on top, which if I'm doing a brisket, I'm probably throwing six, seven, you know, the big chunks on top. 
let it catch fire, let that wood. So the key to a clean fire is let the stick catch, whether it's a stick burner or it's an egg, let that wood catch fire. 